Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to hash passwords for your users when you're creating them before you actually save it to the database. Because right now, if you were to look right over here in the database, you can see all the users and their passwords, and that's obviously not good. And that's obviously a huge red flag for any application that saves the passwords raw like this. Because if a hacker gets access to your database, they can literally see all your users and all of their passwords and that's not good so you want to make sure you always hash your passwords before you save it to the database and then once we hash the passwords i'll show you how when we log in how we can actually compare the hash passwords so that way we can validate that the user is actually passing in the correct password so first let's go ahead and install bcrypt so let me go into my terminal npm i so i'm going to type npm i bcrypt like this and once we're done let's just rerun our server again and now what i'm going to do is let's go into our utils folder i'll create a new file called uh, helpers.js because i want to keep this logic separate from the rest of our code base so inside here, I'm going to go ahead and import bcrypt from bcrypt like this. And what I want to do is I simply just want to create a function that will take care of hashing the password. So I'll create a function and I'll export it. I'll call this function hash password. And this function is going to take in the actual password itself. So password. And the way that we actually begin hashing the password in bcrypt is very simple. The first thing that we need is obviously the plain text password. And then the other thing that we need is a, what is called a salt round. Okay. And uh, basically the salt round just pretty much means, uh, you know, how much time is needed to calculate the hash for, for bcrypt. So of course, the more rounds you, you want that it's going to increase complexity. Uh, the documentation recommends 10. So I'll create a variable. I'll call this salt rounds equals 10 like that. And then uh, what we can do is we first want to actually generate a salt. So this is the rounds, but we want to still generate the salt. So I'm going to go ahead and call bcrypt. And then I'm going to go ahead and call this gen salt method like this. And then you can just simply pass in the rounds. So salt rounds like that. And then this is asynchronous, but there's also a gen salt sync function that is synchronous. So if you don't want to use async await, then you could just use this function. So it, it really doesn't matter all that much because we're going to do, we're going to be doing everything in order anyways. So first we want to generate the salt. So let me store this in a variable. So bcrypt.gen salt sync and then pass in salt rounds. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and call bcrypt and then you're going to call hash. So again, this is asynchronous as well. So this will return a promise with the data, in this case, our password hashed. Now there's also hash sync, which is the same function. It just does it synchronously. So it doesn't return a promise, but it'll call this function and then it will return a string. So I'll just use hash sync since I'm using gen salt sync as well so you call this function and you pass in the text password that you want to hash and then you want to pass in the salt okay so i'll just pass in this salt right over here just like that and then i'm done and then i can just return this so whenever i call hash password this will hash the password for me so let me actually console log salt as well because i want to actually show you what this value looks like so now what we want to do is before we actually create our user we want to make sure we hash the password so i'm going to go into my users.mjs file in the routes folder so i'm going to go back to my users endpoint where i'm creating an actual user so this one right over here and you can see uh right over here on line 61 i'm creating a new instance of my user and then i'm saving it right inside this try catch or inside this try block so before i actually pass the data into the user constructor 
what I want to do is I want to reference data.password because remember this data is the request body that is being sent to this endpoint and we expect there to be a password field. And since we are doing validation after this point, the password field will be there. So I want to basically reassign a new value or assign a new value to the password field to the data object itself. Okay. So when I pass the data object to the constructor of user, it will contain the hashed password, not the raw password. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call hash password, and that's going to be imported up top over here from our helpers file that we just created from the utils folder. Uh, where am I? Okay, right over here. Now remember the hash password function is synchronous because we're not using any uh, async await in here and we're not returning any promises. We're just returning the string. So we don't need to use async await. But if you did use the asynchronous methods like gen salt and then hash, then of course you would need to first await this. And then you would need to add async like that. And then you would need to add async in front of this hash password call. So I just wanted to mention that for those of you who choose to use the asynchronous versions of the functions. So I'm going to call hash password and I'll pass in data.password. So this will take the raw password, hash it, and then store it back to the password field for data. So I'll console log, I'm, I'm already console logging data up here, but I'll console log it after we assign the new value for password. So let's go ahead and see how this all works. So let's go into Thunder Client. Let's make a post request to API slash users. And we need to send a username, password, and display name. Let's change it. Let's do uh, John. And the username will be John because we already have Anson as username already in the database. Going to click send. Uh, is our server up and running? Uh, whoops, I forgot one more thing. I think I, yep, I forgot to name helpers. .js to MJS. Let me rename that. And then inside the users.mjs file, we need to make sure we are adding that .mjs extension. That was the main problem over there. I keep forgetting. So I apologize for that, but let's test this out again. So our server's up and running. If I go back to Thunder Client, click send. Uh, let's see, password. Oh, username must be at least five characters. Let's do Johnny. Okay, click send. Okay, and now you can see that the password is hashed. Let's go into my database. And you can see Johnny is saved in the database and it has the hashed password. Okay, wonderful. We now know how to hash passwords and save it to the database. Now, the next problem that we have since we have authentication is we need to be able to actually compare the hashed password with a value that we're sending to the server. Because right now, let's say if I try to log in as Johnny, let's do this with our current logic right now. If I try to log in as Johnny and I, and I provide my password like this, it's going to throw an error. It's going to say bad credentials. Okay, that's because we're trying to compare uh, this password, hello123, with the hashed text. And obviously, hello123 is not equal to this entire thing. So here's what we need to do. We need to go back into our strategy file. Right over here inside our verify function, okay, right over here. What we need to do right before we compare the password, instead of uh, just comparing the raw password that is sent from the client side with the hashed password now, we need to actually hash that password that was sent from the client. So what I'm saying is when I send hello123 as a password to the server, I need to hash hello123. And then we're going to compare that hash to the hashed value that's in the database. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. And actually there's a built-in function that we can use to compare hash passwords. And I'll show you what that field is. So let me go back into helpers.mjs. So there's this function called uh, bcrypt.compare or compare sync. I'll use compare sync. And what you do is you pass in the plain text password and then you pass in the encrypted which is the hash password so this will be the actual hash password that is saved to the user in the database so first let me just actually create a helper function so i'll do compare 
password equals password. Uh, let me do this plain hashed like this. Okay, and then uh, this bcrypt.comparesync function will return a boolean. So I'll just return that boolean. It's only pass in plain. And then the second argument for compare sync will be encrypted, which is just going to be the hashed password. And so this will return a boolean value. So if it if these two values are equal to each other, then it will return true. If it's not, then it will return false. So we don't actually need to rehash anything because this compare sync function will take care of it for us. Okay. So let's go over to here. And then all I need to do is just simply, instead of doing this check like this, I can just call it compare sync, or I'm sorry, not compare sync, compare password. And then just pass in the plain password. So that's password right over here. So this is the value sent from the client, the raw text password. And then we're going to pass in the hashed password. So find user dot password like that. Okay. And then of course, if this returns, uh, we want to negate the value because if it returns true, that means the passwords do match. But if the password uh, don't does not match, it would return false. So if not false, then we'll throw a new error. So let's go ahead and try and re-authenticate. And now you see we're good to go. And notice how if I try to log in as Anson, because currently Anson has the raw text password saved in the database, it should actually error out because now we're trying to compare uh, the plain text to a hashed value, which obviously is not going to work. So yeah, that is how you can save the hashed password instead of the text-based password to the database. And then you can, and that's how you can compare them as well. So I hope this part of hashing passwords and how you can save the hashed password to the database and compare it makes sense. So in the next section of this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and talk about session stores, something that will help us tremendously because right now, whenever we keep on restarting our server, our sessions keep getting dropped from the memory store because it's volatile. So I'll show you how we can actually use session stores to save the session data to the database. So that way when we drop the server and then restart it, our session will be restored and you'll see that we remain logged in.